There are two ways to play Chevros, as a support or as a sub DPS. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys my complete sub DPS Chevros build and explain why I actually prefer the sub DPS playstyle over the more popular support option. But before I get into the video, remember to like and subscribe to the channel because I'm trying to hit a thousand subs by the end of 2024, so I'd really appreciate it if you helped me out on that journey. Alright, before we get into anything else, let's just take a look at my Chevros real quick. So right now we're rocking level 80, haven't gotten her to tier 6 yet, but honestly I'm not sure if I'm going to prioritize that, I think I'm perfectly fine with her staying at tier 5. She's at 17k max HP, so it's not high because we're not building support, so we're not putting any investment into max HP. Her attack is at 1600, and that might seem a bit low, but that's because Chevros' second ascension stat is not attack, like most horse star characters, is actually HP. Since we're using characters like Bennett and Cujo, we're going to be getting up to 2500 attack easy, so that's fine. As for my crit stats, we're walking a solid 68 over 192. I think that's pretty good for a 4-star character that doesn't have a second crit ascension stat. I could definitely get it a little more perfect, but I think this is a perfectly fine crit ratio to, to work with. 120% ER definitely could be a bit higher, but since I have so much ER in my Bennett, I've, I haven't been having much issue with recharging the Chevra Solt. So, for now, we'll leave it at that. And we gotta keep in mind, even though this isn't a support Chevros, we still naturally have 17k max HP. Meaning, when we ultimate, we're just gonna be getting 17% attack buffs, which is pretty great. I know it can get up to 40%, but by not even investing into her max HP, you're still getting a solid 17%, which is pretty good. And as you can see, my talents are currently at 111.8. This happens to be 11 because I have C4. And I will say right now, C4 is very good for the sub dps build after using ring of bursting grenades the hold mode of short range rapid fire will not go on cooldown what this means is after you use your ultimate you can use the hold version of your ultimate of your skill sorry three times in a row within six seconds c3 is where i'm getting the extra three levels for my skill i'm actually very lucky that c3 happens to upgrade your skill not your burst otherwise it wouldn't have been as much value so that's cool c2 is also pretty good for sub dps chevros because after using the holding version of your rifle and you hit a target two chain explosions will trigger near the location so later on when we do a damage showcase you're going to see the two bombs spawn side to side of where you shoot and those are going to both deal 120 percent of chevros's attack so it's not anything crazy but still a decent buff to have for sub dps chevros all right when it comes to weapon i'm currently using the deathmatch at r rank one i could actually be using a primordial jade wing spear right now the only reason why i'm using deathmatch is because color wise it fits <laughs> And that's pretty much the extent. Well, I mean, obviously the crit rate is great. 36% crit rate, which is an insane crit stat stick. The base attack is a bit low, but honestly, the 36% crit rate is enough to compensate for it. All right, so going into artifacts, we're currently running two set crimson, two set golden troop. The crimson for 15% extra power damage and the golden troop for 20% extra skill damage. There's probably some four set bonuses out there that'll be better for sub DPS chevros. But these pieces that I'm using right now just are kind of good, which is why I just kind of slapped this on. Uh, let's take a quick look. My crit damage circlet currently gives 7% attack uh, crit rate and 11% ER, one roll into flat defense. Honestly, I, this was suffice. This is this was sufficient enough for me to use it. We're using a pyro cut with 18% crit damage, 5% crit rate or 6% crit rate and one roll into EM. This also could have rolled a bit better if it just didn't roll into EM and rolled into like crit rate or something. This would have been a really nice piece, but still very usable. We have the attack sands with 33% crit damage and a little bit of ER, which helps with some of uh, some of Chevrolet's energy problems. The 239 flat HP is pretty fine too, because obviously having more max HP is going to be giving a little more attack to your team when you burst. So it's still, it's not a useless stat by any means. This is definitely one of my weaker pieces. It's a 28% crit damage with no crit rate and it rolled into defense once, rolled into EM once. It's a bit on the weaker side, but it's fits the crimson requirement so i just slapped it on and finally my flower with 13 percent crit rate which is pretty pug rolled into em once and yeah all right so now that i'm done showing off my chevros stats let's get into some damage showcase all right so right now i'm using chevros on the standard ripe raiden hyper carry team which is raiden kujo bennett and usually kazua but since all these units are electro and pyro you could swap kazua out for chevros and it works really well if not better than having Kazuo on your team and since this team already has two great damage buffers in Bennett and Kujo we can use that to test out Chevrolet's insane damage as well 
All right, I think we're gonna do two damage showcases. I think the first one, we're gonna focus more on Chevrus's individual damage. And then for the second showcase, we'll kind of just show the what what her, what her damage looks like in like the regular flow of Rider and Hyper Carry. But yeah, let's just start. Um, let me think real quick. Let's put down that. Let's throw this, that. Let's do this. And all right, that's 3,000 attack on its own. So it just went out 1,400 from her base, uh, not base, but her overall 1600. So that's pretty cracked. Yeah, let's just, so let's pop the ultimate. It didn't crit, unlucky, but 50K, 67K, 33K. So that right there was the C4 that I mentioned that allows you to shoot three times in a row within a duration of six seconds. But now ultimate, Kujo buff, throw that. And this time I crit, which is for 63, 56, 38. 40k. Nice. So that was definitely at least 150,000 damage overall. And we're not even considering the the C2 that I was talking about, the little balls that appear. Let's actually do that real quick. Let's just take a look at the C2 damage here. 40k, 9k, and I think that was a 3k on the other side. So yeah, it does add a not an ignorable amount of damage, definitely. So one thing I should mention when it comes to the Chef versus damage, so if you don't know this about her kit already, <laughs> I just let her tank like a bajillion damage, but um, yeah, so she has this thing in her skill called Overcharged Ball, and basically what that does is anytime you trigger Overload, you get this little bullet. So see, on the right side of my screen, or the left, sorry, you can see a little bullet mark. That means you have an over Overcharged Ball ready to shoot. And the thing is, um, that increases your skill damage by a lot. Look, 536% at level 11 talent. So generally when you want to use the skill, you want it to be an overcharged ball. But the thing is, at C4, when you're rapidly shooting three times with your skill, it's not very guaranteed that the overcharged ball is going to apply to all the shots, right? Because it's you can't like get a proc for each shot it's like it's too hard it's not reliable it's not realistic i'm not sure if it has a cooldown because it's not actually written in the I'm, I'm assuming there is because let's actually test it let's use it oh my god that did so much damage so you can get a oh uh, actually is there a cooldown we're gonna have to test this again all right so we got one overcharged ball oh two okay okay you kind of okay it works you just have to be very smart about it. So let me actually, yeah, let me retract what I just said. It is possible if you just kind of like delay your shots a bit. But you have to keep in mind that you do have a six, six second window. So you also have to not delay it too much. All right, let's uh throw down that. That guy's tankier, so let's go for him. Boom. Let's just do that. And then boom. First shot. Overcharge ball. Proc another one. Oh, okay. So, sometimes you need a weave in an auto attack to guarantee the uh, Raiden, the Raiden skill to pop, and then it'll proc overload again. So it is a little difficult, but it is possible. So you'd, you'd want to shoot, and then if the Raiden skill didn't pop, you have to attack, and then shoot again, and then do that again, and then shoot within six seconds. It's it's definitely possible, and it's, it's definitely worth worth it it seems because i just did like what 60k 50k on each shot so yeah i just learned something through the middle of this video that's pretty pog all right so now that we've seen what chevros's damage looks like individually let's run through the rider and hypercare team like we normally would and let's just see how that looks so right off the bat we're gonna throw that down i think we're just gonna get right into like the cycle here shoot that a few times do that and then bursts it didn't crit, but it still did 70k. Yeah, so that, I, think, I think that's going to be the standard rotation. Uh, I, I kind of threw that down for no reason. Uh, so, Raiden's Burst is still down, so we can actually take this time to... Boom. Boom. Okay, it's a little hard, but you get the point. Okay, we, we lost Bennett Burst because I was acting a bit slow, but... <laughs> Both my Raiden Burst didn't crit, but... Okay, you get the point. That's like the general rotation. When Raiden's Burst is down, um, you can throw down your Chevrolet's Burst and do a quick volley of damage. Or, 
right before you're about to set up your ride and burst, um, you can throw in a Chevrolet combo real quick. I, I one it works pretty well. So realistically, um, ride and set up your E, Bennett burst into Chevrolet burst into three bullets into Cujo into ride and burst. Right, so that's gonna be the combo, the general combo. And as you can see, very effective. It cleared pretty fast. Um, and the best part is, let's actually move to another boss for this. Now, obviously the condition of playing Chevros is that you can only have power and electric teammates, right? So how are you gonna get reactions like uh, Vaporizer, blah, 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 right? Well, if you're playing against enemies that so happen to already be um, afflicted with Hydro Aura or uh, ice or whatever then that weakness kind of goes away so let's actually all right right in skill Bennett you you overcharge ball one can we get another one two hundred K again three eighty K nice that felt really clean honestly all that health bar that he's missing is from just uh, Chevrolet. That's crazy. I am. That's kind of what I was talking about when I said that he won shots randomly. Um, boom. 63k. Nice. There we go. Alright, cool. So, yeah, that's uh, Chevrolet's damage on uh, with Vaporize. And, yeah, realistically, you're not going to be seeing that much, right? Because you can only perform that on, like, Hydro Slimes, Hydro. Topa, Cryo Slimes. Oh, I guess against Cryo would be doing even more damage, right? But anyway, point is, um, I'm not saying it's impossible because uh, you are going to run into these enemies sometimes, right? So it's not always a weakness that you only have Electro and Pyro units on your team. All right, at the beginning of the video, I did say I was going to explain why I prefer the sub TPS playstyle on Chevrolet over the support playstyle. So let's actually just get into that right now. So the reason why I don't want to play support Chevrolet Outside of just like, oh, I want big numbers on Chevros, so I'm playing sub DPS. Like, outside of like that simple reason, because that can apply to anyone, right? Like, oh, I want to see big numbers on Diona, let me build DPS Diona, right? But, but like, the reason, like, outside of that, the reason why I don't want to play support Chevros is because, well, Bennett exists. Utility wise, Chevros just feels incredibly overshadowed by Bennett. All the heals and attack buffs Chevros gives, Bennett just does it better, which is why it feels so lackluster to play support Chevros alongside of Bennett, which is what I'm doing right now. But, you know, I can already hear the counterpoint flying at me. But Hosh and Josh, I don't use, nor do I want to use Bennett on my team. And you know what? That's a perfectly valid statement. I'm not going to argue that at all. If you don't want to play Bennett on your team, then support Chevrolet is probably fine, right? Because 40% attack buffs with moderate healing is good for your team. It really is. It's just the only problem is when you already have a character that does that, not only does that, but does it way better than why have, you know, a second character that does that, right? So my final point is if you already have Bennett on your team, then I would highly recommend that you go this build because not only is it redundant to just have a second support on your team, but Chevrolet can actually deal a lot of damage. All right, so I think that's going to wrap up the uh, sub DPS Chevrolet overall guide slash showcase, whatever this video was. Like I mentioned earlier, please leave a like on the video and also subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to hit a thousand subs by the end of the year, so I'd really appreciate it if you helped me out with that. If this video inspired you to start playing sub DPS Chevrolet, or at least try it out, then make sure to leave a comment down below letting me know. I'll definitely leave a witty response of some kind. But yeah, I think that finishes everything I wanted to say. Peace.